this video is sponsored by our friends at Solder Stick. There'll be more about them at the end, but check out these T-tap connectors, insulation displacement connectors. If you need to break into a wire, all you need to do is clip that around it. It'll pierce the insulation, and then you simply slide on a spade connector. But more about that later. Today we're talking about our old friend, the 555 timer in one of its modes. Today we're talking about the, I will call it the second mode of the 555 timer, the bi-stable mode, or what I like to call how to turn your 555 timer into a flip-flop. Uh, one thing before we get started, I know you guys can all hear the noise. I've got the 3D printer running over here. And I am attempting to print out a nut and a bolt that I have designed myself to see if I can figure out how to do this. So, pardon the noise. Okay, so the 555 timer. Tell me a more versatile IC. Other than maybe just a general purpose op amp. So the 555 timer is set up in the bi-stable mode. Bi-stable mode, it has two modes, on and off, basically. So if I click this button here, the LED lights, as you can clearly see, that LED is going to stay lit until I click this button. And those are our two states, and that is how it becomes basically a flip-flop. A flip-flop circuit is a circuit that alternates between two states. In this case, we're, we're simply alternating the current going through the output pin. Pretty simple, right? Now, what really makes this interesting as far as 555 timers go is the hallmark of the 555 timer is, of course, an RC circuit. Well, there's no RC circuit here. This capacitor here is simply between VCC and ground to act as a reservoir. Not that it's needed in this case, but it's just general good practice. I generally do it. This capacitor here is just coupling the control voltage pin to ground. And these resistors are simply pull-ups. So let's take a look at the circuit here. And I'll do my best to explain to you how and why it'll work like this. So let's start with our power connections. Pin 8, VCC, pin 1 is ground. That's it. Now our chip is powered. Let's put our output in next. Pin 3 goes to, in this case, a green LED through a 330 ohm resistor to ground. Pretty simple. Pin 5, our control voltage pin is coupled with a 100 nano uh, farad capacitor to ground. A lot of stuff going to ground. Pin 6, one of our favorite pins, the uh, threshold pin, is connected directly to ground. What does that mean? Well, this is how we're eliminating the timing. If that threshold pin never goes above two-thirds VCC, it will never turn off the output. Because remember, the output comes on when the trigger, in this case, here's the trigger, pin 2, which is currently being pulled high with a 10k resistor when when this one let me get a pin here and I write this so that maybe this will help you understand when pin 2 is less than one third VCC the output goes on. So that's pin 2. When pin 6 is greater than 2 thirds VCC, the output, pardon my uh, dyslexia, goes on. Off. Okay, there we go. So when this one is low, the output goes on. When this one is high, the output goes off. But this is never going to go high. 
I'm making it go low. So when we trigger that output by by closing this switch here, right there. So I made a little um, pin assignment cheat sheet over here that we can take a look at. So pin one going to ground. Pin two, our trigger, is pulled up to VCC with that 10K resistor. Pin three is our output going through the diode and a current limiting resistor to ground. Pin four is our reset, again, pulled up to VCC. Pin five coupled to ground. Pin six connected to ground. Pin 7, that's our discharge pin, it's not used in this case. And pin 8 is VCC. So look, we have two switches. They don't have to be switches. You could use this with digital logic and take the output from another IC to activate this one or that one. So again, here we are. Here is our trigger pin, pin 2, being pulled high. But when I click this switch, we are grounding that pin. You see, that resistor pulls us up to VCC, but the switch here is connected to ground, so when the switch is closed, now this pin goes lower than one-third VCC, and the output is on. Now over here, this is connected to pin 4, which is being held high, but if I ground the reset pin, it resets the chip, and that's the backside, so to speak, of our flip-flop. So now you've seen two modes, the A-stable mode, I'm sorry, the monostable mode and the bistable mode. That leaves us with just the uh, A-stable mode, one of my favorite modes. So I've got a question for you. What's your favorite project you've ever used a 555 timer in? Let me know down below. 555 is a flip-flop, kind of cool. All right, guys, do me a favor. Check out the video here at the end from our sponsor, Solder Stick. They make some cool stuff. Might be useful to you. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Today's video is brought to you by Solder Stick. Solder Stick makes quick, waterproof wire connections that last a long time and protect whatever it is you're working on. They sell different types of connectors, everything from T-tap connectors, which allow you to put a splice into the middle of a wire without having to cut the wire or remove any insulation, waterproof uh, melt butt connector kits, Spade connector kits, which if you work on cars or boats, you know how useful they will be. And the same goes for ring connectors. When you need to connect a wire to something with a nut and a bolt, this is simply the way to do it. Solder stick. Remember them for all of your wire connection needs. There's a link down below for a discount.